In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He formed our first parents in his own image and entrusted the whole world to their care. But they said no, and we fell. Adam and Eve were exiled from Eden, their home. The world was broken. We were broken. But God did not abandon us. And humanity set out on the great pilgrimage known as salvation history, journeying with the promise of a savior who would come to us. At a very specific time, and in a very specific place. Pilgrims come to the Holy Land to place themselves inside the actual locations of where God came to rescue his people. They come to witness the place the Savior was announced by an angel, anticipated by Mary and Joseph, and adored by shepherds and magi. Let's make a spiritual pilgrimage to experience the story of Advent. Advent is a season of waiting. It's a season where we prepare ourselves by reliving the expectancy that Israel had for the coming of a savior. It's a season where we remember the coming of Christ in the flesh to undo the sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve, in the garden. We begin our story with another couple, Zechariah and Elizabeth. They represent Israel. Their names, Zechariah, God remembers. Elizabeth, God's promise. God remembers his promise and now he will act. Jerusalem was home to the temple, the center of Jewish life. Zechariah, a priest, would have come here to offer sacrifice. All that remains of the temple today is this, the Western Wall. People place their prayers in the wall, hoping they'll be heard.
This model in the Holy Land gives us an idea of what the temple might have looked like in the time of Zechariah. And on that day, when Zechariah entered this temple, something unexpected happened. The angel Gabriel appeared to him. The angel declared, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. He will prepare the people for their Lord. Meanwhile, the multitude is here, outside praying, waiting for Zechariah to emerge and to pronounce the blessing. But Zechariah did not believe the words of the angel, and he was struck mute. The southern steps, still intact, is an enormous stairway into the temple. It marks the end of the pilgrim's journey to pray and to hear the priestly blessing. However, on this day, when Zechariah emerged, there was only silence. When Zechariah hears the name of the angel, Gabriel, that's packed with meaning. The last time we heard about Gabriel was in the Old Testament. He came to the people of God who are in exile, and he told them that the Savior was coming soon and that their sins would be forgiven. And everything the angel says comes to pass. Elizabeth conceives. Zechariah remains mute for nine months because of his doubt. And John, who we know as John the Baptist, was soon to be born. Here, a church was built around the birthplace of John the Baptist. And upon his birth, Zachariah's tongue was loosed, and he was finally able to proclaim a blessing. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. For you, child, will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. Upon the birthplace of John, an inscription reads, here, the precursor of the Lord was born. It's in this wilderness John goes to prepare, in the spirit of so many prophets before him. He had left everything and went into the desert to lead a life of penance. The desert is a place of waiting, a place of preparation, a place of prayer.
This is the same wilderness our Lord would later embrace. In the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is where God would meet his people. Even today, people still find refuge here for prayer. But soon, in the midst of this barrenness, Life was coming. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. His example invites us to retire into the interior desert of our own heart, to await the coming of Jesus in deep recollection, silence, and solitude. And here on the banks of the Jordan, John prepared the people to meet their God. the Savior who would lead them out of the exile of sin, the answer to the prayer the angel Gabriel promised Zachariah in the temple, he was now at hand. Six months after Zachariah's encounter with Gabriel in the temple, the angel visits a young virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and her name was Mary. In the courtyard of the church, there are numerous mosaics representing Marian devotions from around the world.
This church honors the moment the angel Gabriel came to Mary, addressing her, Hail, full of grace. As we go deeper into the church, we get to the heart of the scene. In the lower church, preserved for pilgrims to see, is believed to be Mary's childhood home, the home the angel would have announced the good news. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Here, the Word was made flesh. This is the moment that all humanity had waited for since the fall. All creation leaned in to hear Mary's response. The heavenly court eagerly waited and anticipated what she would say. I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Finally, we have a yes to God's word. Finally, we have someone who trusts him completely. And so Mary arose and went with haste to the hill country to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was expecting. This church was built on the site where Elizabeth and Mary met. When Mary arrived, John the Baptist, still in Elizabeth's womb, leapt. And Elizabeth greeted her with the title, Blessed are thou among women, a line we're used to praying in the Hail Mary. However, this title is used only twice in Israel's history. In the Old Testament, the title was given to Jael and Judith, who are depicted on the walls of this church, holding instruments of their victory. Both of these women were known for crushing the head of the enemy of God's people. Now, upon hearing these words, Satan, the ancient serpent, the ultimate enemy of God's people, would have shuddered. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census should be taken throughout the entire world. We have a setup of two kings. Caesar, who's the most powerful man in the world, thinks he's directing history, but in reality, a young virgin, accompanied by her betrothed, Joseph, is heading to a town to give birth to the king of history itself.
As Mary and Joseph left Nazareth, surely they brought with them the prayers of the prophets. O oh, wisdom, show us the way. O oh, Lord, stretch out your mighty hand. O oh, root of Jesse, come to our aid. O oh, key of David, lead your captive people. O oh, rising sun, shine in the darkness. O King of the nations, save your creation. O Emmanuel, ransom captive Israel. As the sun set that evening, a new and definitive chapter in world history was about to begin. There was no room for them. They had been denied a place at the inn, and so they took refuge in a stable surrounded by animals. The savior of the world was about to be born.
To enter this church, you must pass through an unusually small door, the door of humility. This reminds us of the God who stooped down to enter into our human existence. This is the oldest major church in the Holy Land. The Church of the Nativity was built initially by Constantine in the fourth century after his mother, St. Helena, made a pilgrimage to this location. The ancient mosaic floor can still be seen where countless pilgrims have stood and prayed. A legend says a 7th century Persian army decided to spare this one church upon recognizing figures wearing Persian garments in the mosaics on the wall. These were the three magi from the east. Despite the historic turmoil of this region, the church we see today has remained fairly constant since the last major renovation 15 centuries ago. It's evident that this has been a place of peace and prayer. Under the altar is the grotto, the cave where the Holy Family took refuge. Here a star marks the place where Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling the prophecy that a virgin will conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day, in the city of David, a Savior, It was here the shepherds were first to hear the good news. The shepherds went with haste and found the baby in the manger. The news that would restore all of creation went out to the town, to the nation, to the ends of the earth, and ultimately to you.
Now as we approach our Lord, let's prepare our hearts to welcome Christ afresh. He was born. The wait was over. The merciful act of our salvation had begun. Mm -hmm.